Gare Sunday Satsang Radakun, July 17, 2022. Do you have any questions? Anyone would like to ask a question? Bhavati, can I ask a question? No question. Somebody? Aditya? One question. All right. Okay. <coughs> Go ahead. So it's written in, in uh, Sarata Darshini that uh, after Krishna, uh, like after uh, Rajvas is worshipped Dilraj, so the next day, that is Dvitiya, there is some festival called Bhratra Dvitiya that was celebrated. And Krishna had a feast on the shore of Yamuna. But not much description is written. Can you please elaborate on that? What's the name of the festival? Ratra Dvitiya. Ratra Dvitiya. That's, that's Yamuna y worship. Yamuna worships Yamaras that day. Ratra Dvitiya. Dvitiya means second day, second day of Kartik Vaina, Krishna Paksha, Ashuka Ashuka, I forget. Krishna Paksha, Ashuka Paksha. And that's when Rachi, his sister worships brother. So Krishna doesn't have any sisters. And Yoga Mai is his sister, but <laughs> she's not visible and on the ground. She's acting in the background as Puramasi. And, and Vasudeva Krishna, Mathura, Subhadra as his sister, from Vasudeva Rohini, or Devaki, whoever, Devaki. So I don't know much about that festival, but it's a big day. There's a big temple in Mathura at Vishram God of Yama Yama. There's a black black murti of Yamaraj and a black murti of, Yama, of Yamuna Devi. It's a very ancient temple. It says 5,000 years old temple, Yama Yama. So on that day, generally people in Vrindavan, they bathe in Yamuna. And you go to that temple in Vishram God, where Krishna bathed after he killed Kansa. Worship Yami Yami, Bhachi Puja, Bhachi Dvitya. Dvitya means the second day. Ekam, it could be called Bhachi Ekam Puja, but it's called Dvitya because it's the second day. Bhachi means brothers worship sisters. Right? Bhachi worships. So if you have a sister, you worship her that day. As a representative of Shakti. <laughs> we don't read much about that. Sri Krishna has, has written about Naimitic Leelas. He's written about Jewel and Leela, Holy, and different Leelas. He's written about, he's written, he, read, he wrote about Raki, Raki Banda, and like that. But he didn't write about that particular Leela, so we don't know anything about that Leela. Pratri Dritya. But on that day, you should bathe in Radhakund, because Yamuna is also here and offer water to Yamaraj and Yamuna Devi. Yamaraj is a very good person to be friends with. <laughs> <laughs> because he will protect you. Because Yamaraj, who is Yamaraj? He's an important personality. He controls the passage of the jivas from death to the next birth. So he's an important deva to Srila Krishna Yamaraj. But we prefer to see the Vishnu Dutas, not the Yama Dutas. <laughs> but it says in Guru Puran that even pious devotees have to go to Yamaloka. There's two pathways to Yamaloka, one for Russians and one for Indians. <laughs> no, Jogi. There's two, two path, two, there are two, Guru Puran describes there's two pathways to Yamaloka. One is for the pious religious people, and one is for the impious people. And there are very minute descriptions described there of those two different pathways. 
One is one is covered with the, the pathway for the pious people is is like a pathway through a forest or shady trees on both sides and fruit trees everywhere, ripe fruits and lakes here and there to bathe in. And it's a pleasurable path to Yamaloka. You walk at your own speed. And the path for the sinners, the Papi, Papa Johnny, for the sinful people, the path of Yamaloka at the time of death are taken by the, by the Yamadutes and the, they're very ferocious looking Yamadutes. They look like Rakshas. <laughs> uh, for the devotee, they're all Devatas. They're very beautiful as of figures. And they take them, take the soul along that pathway. So the other person, there's all dogs biting along the way, like, you know, when you go to Mongolia, you can run down. <laughs> dogs chase you out the street, biting you, barking. <laughs> so <laughs> when you go in Yamaloka, the dogs also chase you. They're very ferocious, and they nip at your legs, and it's very summery, very hot, hot sun overhead, no fruit trees, no legs. It's a hot, hot path is made of hot copper. It's a very uh, serious situation. When you get to Yamaloka, the describes are just two forms of Yamaraj. There's the devotee Yamaraj and the, and the sinful Yamaraj, sinful, devotee, sinful people Yamaraj. For a devotee, Yamaraj is a beautiful demigod. He's sitting on a golden throne, golden singer son, and he gets down from the singer son, and he comes down and he embraces the, embraces the Vaishnava. He says, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to meet you and touch your transcendental body, your Vaishnava. Then he asks, he asks the, uh, his uh, scribes, Chitraguta, Chitraguta, his secretary, he said, what are all the good things this person did? Oh, this person, he gave Sunday satsang lectures. <laughs> <laughs> Here are a few books. He lived in Rockland. Okay, you do anything bad? No, I didn't. Do anything. Okay, go to go to Goloka. You know, go to next birth in Bharat and the Brahmin family, Vaishnava family, whatever. It says that everybody has to go to Yamaloka. Except if you're a pure body, Krishna says in Gita, I come at the time of death of a pure body taken directly to the spiritual world. He says, I'm the swift deliver. In other words, Swindartam. Krishna says, I'm the swift deliver from the ocean birth and death. Sagari Samudar Tam or something like that. Yeah, it's a verse in Gita. And then we see in the first canto of chapter of Narada Muni, Krishna came, Vishnu came to the time of death, bringing his spiritual body from Vaikuntha, and he immediately gave up his material body and got his spiritual body, went to Vaikuntha, became Narada Muni, to his Nitya Seva. So we don't, we don't have to stop over in Yamaloka. But if we don't attain frame, we have to go there. So be nice to him now, so I'll give you a big smile when you get there. <laughs> yama, Yama, Yamuna, Yamaraj. It's funny, there's Yama, Yama, because Yamaraj is not the son of the sun god, is he? Shani is the son of the sun god. Yamaraj also is the son. Yamaraj is also the son. Who's the mother? Chaya. Chaya. Oh, because uh, Chaya is the mother of Shani huh. and the mother of Yamaraj. Two very important personalities. <laughs> one person beats you up when you're alive, one person beats you up when you're dead. <laughs> when you're alive, Shani beats you up. When you're dead, Yamaraj beats you up. <laughs> so you should better do puja every Saturday and do barge, barge, Varadvitya Puja and Karjik also, Yama Yami. That's, that's cool. Plot thickens. So when you offer, you will, when you go to Radhika and offer tarpa and offer water back facing north, facing north towards Yamanochi and Gangochi, you offer Ganga and Yamuna back, then Sri Devi was pleased by that Puja, and Yamaraj is pleased and Shani Maharaj is pleased. So bathing in Radhika is sarva mangal, all those fishes, and it satisfies everyone, especially you. <laughs> you get the most benefit. So I don't know anything about that so much, but we got, we got some fun talking about different things. Jai Shri Radhi. <laughs> this is all part of our culture. Persons. It's all about persons. 
Everything, everything, consciousness is ultimately, everything is personal. Person, the more we're a person, the more we see personality in every direction, in every, every element, every aspect of creation is all personal. Because the supreme contact with the supreme personality of God is there. So, other question? Any more question? Yes, sir. The question is, we read in Shastras about the, trend, the complexion of the transcendental bodies of Krishna's Nitya Parishads, like Yashoda, Radharani, Draupadi, Arjun, Uddha, Krishna, etc. And when we see modern paintings, and they always show all of the ladies are always golden color, or white, whitish, or yellow, or golden color. So why, why is there a difference between the paintings and the Shastras? Well, obviously the Shastras are correct and the paintings are, are just uh, lo lokic. There's a lot of lokic vichara. Lokic vichara means ordinary materialistic viewpoint because most Indian artists are men and they don't like black women. <laughs> <laughs> They like golden color, they like any women, fair color, tan, golden. So they make all the Davies, all the, all the demigods, all the Davies are all these golden color. But it's not a fact. Radha Krishna is only a Shibi God, even Bhagavatam, it says, she showed us Shamala Rang. Shamala Rang means she showed us dark blue in color. I see all the paintings I've ever seen. I saw one painting done by a Russian artist, painting a showed a blue color. Oh, very beautiful looking also. But you, it's because this kind of artist, they copied all Indian posters and just made it, their own version of them. So they always made it golden. But the Shastras, they say everywhere, everywhere it's told that the color of your shoulder is black is like Krishna. Makes sense. <laughs> and there's some joke, there's some joke that's told on Prikma, but it's not really based on Shastras, it's just a joke. The coward boy's joke with Krishna. Your mother is so golden, your brother is so white, how are you so black? <laughs> so then Krishna goes, you show, all the cowboys are picking on me, because they're all golden color. Subal is the same color, Subal, my best friend, he's the same color as Rarani. He's called golden color of skin, Subal. And they say, I'm black like night, like a, I'm last year. My mother is so golden, why, why am I? And she said, well, you know, you're, so she said, you just tell me you're born at midnight. <laughs> Before midnight is very dark, so you can't dark. Or tell us a cloudy day. <laughs> you know, so you were, you, you were okay, but when you take a, when I went across the Yamuna, you became black. Because <laughs> the other name for Yamuna is Kalindi. So the paintings of the modern artists, or most artists, are not correct in terms of skin tone. The gobies and the gobas have, they have different colored skin. The gobas have some green colored skin like Ramachandra. They have red like fire engine, red color. They have orange colored skin. That's really first class Brahmachari, you know. <laughs> <laughs> orange skin, orange socks, orange shoes, orange gloves, orange shirt, you know, orange hat, orange scarf, you know. Some of the, some of these Brahmacharya look like everything died except their skin. They should just jump in the jump in the washing machine with dye and dye the whole thing, you know. Come out with orange skin, they have matching socks and shoes. Really amazing stuff, you know. <laughs> See a color coordinated handbag, handbag, waist sash, socks, everything. <laughs> so it's it's nice to see. 
Like, for example, who's dark in color? Who are the dark personalities? Drovedi's dark blue. The five Pandavas married a dark lady. And they are all golden skin. The five Pandavas are golden skin. Arjuna and Yudhisthira. Uh, Arjuna, I don't know if he's... I forget. Drovedi's for sure. She's sham color. You show the sham color. Vyasadeva is Shankara, Shukadeva is Shankara, Uddha, Uddha Mahashaya is Shankara. I forget, some other, lady, other ladies are Shankara. Jovi, Shoda. Kunti, maybe Kunti. No, not Kunti. I, I don't know. But uh, who else I like that guy? So that's the situation. What you read in Shastra is correct. And that's how you should visualize those personalities that they have that color. It makes sense. I mean, Shastra's mother of Krishna. She's golden. She's sham color. And Rupa Goswami's Radha Krishna teach. Radha Krishna Ganesh Deepika, Rupa Goswami says he's Shastra's sham color. Dark blue, dark, dark blue complexion. Shastra says in Gita, 16th chapter, 24th verse, Tasmat Shastra Pramanam. The Shastra is a Praman, the solid evidence, the solid truth of Praman is Shastra, not Indian artists, not Russian artists. They're good artists, okay, they're good artists, but accuracy, no. I saw a painting by Western devotee, Krishna had toe rings on. I had never read anywhere in Shastra. Of course, this is a very advanced, what everyone says is an advanced devotee. And, but uh, I know his toe rings. I said, toe rings on Krishna? Angle bells, okay. Pile, Krishna wears pile, pile ornaments on his feet. It's kind of, that rests on the feet. Like uh, anklet kind of thing. It's called pile. The toe rings? That's, I don't know about that one. I've, I've never seen any other painting or ever read any Shastra. So I'm curious if I ever meet the artist to ask them that question. Can you show me in Shastra with Christian words toe rings? <laughs> it's a Western artist, by the way. Rather a famous one. Anyway, something different all the time comes up. <laughs> Always keeps your mind active. So he says, this is the last thing this person did. It's the best thing. It's, uh, it's okay, it's right. That's a very beautiful thing. What is this? <laughs> is there, like Krishna says, he keeps every endeavor, every endeavor is covered with some fault. It may not be a fault, it may be my fault, because I, I, you know, there's millions of Shastras written by all kinds of different personalities. So, but I would like to see it, to believe it. <laughs> Not see it with my eyes, see it in a Shastra. Sh two eyes of the devotee are Shastra Chakshus and Guru Chakshus. We see through the eyes of Guru Vani and Shastra Vani. Not through this Shayar Vani. This Shayar means body, body Vani. I, 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 I mean body eye. Show your check shoes. We don't see, that doesn't, that's not seeing. So you can only see based on your knowledge. A man of little knowledge sees very little. <laughs> Reality is very deep and very vast and mul very multifaceted and multi layered. But it, it, the extent of one's knowledge it allows in perception is that reality. They say a rich man is honored in his village. Rich man is honored in his, his village. He goes somewhere else from and nobody knows who he is. That's, you know, that's a Hoosier. Who's a Hoosier? You go to Germany, you go to Germany and someone says, that's Albani or Reliance. What's the guy, Reliance? Ambani. Ambani. Where's Albani? What's Albani? Is that some kind of German pickle or what? <laughs> they won't they know anything who that is in Germany. He's the richest guy in India. So it's all local. Wealth is only local thing. But this is Sharnak Pandit. 
It says a man of wisdom is now is honored all over the world. The wisdom is the most honorable thing. Movie star, big Bollywood movie star, so big famous. They go to New York City, people, who are you? Nobody. <laughs> There's nobody, you know. I'm Priyanka Chopra, I'm Aishwari, Aishwari on this side. Kachina Kaif, wherever you are, you know. Hey, who are you? Get lost, you know. You know you're some dirty Indian, you know, here. <laughs> so it's all, all local, everything is localized. You take a picture from space of the Earth's planet compared to Saturn, Earth is the tip of a needle. Saturn, Saturn is pictured like a big, big thing. And then there's a little dot in the corner. So you see this dot? And from the universal view, this is the size of the Earth's planet. A little dot, a little speck of light, little, little light. And there's a huge planet of Saturn. Sort of really insignificant. Jai, Shami Shodaki Jai. Okay, any other interesting questions? <laughs> yes. Rani, Rani. My question is uh, related to, to his question, and it is about uh, dress. Because uh, in Shastra is written that uh, all the Astasaki has a specific color of dress, all the Astamandari has a specific color of dress, and even Radha and Krishna has a specific color of dress. But uh, in the paintings, uh, and uh, even uh, when we do puja, uh, we can dress the deities with many different colors. So my question is, uh, in the spiritual world, uh, Radha and Krishna and the associates uh, has uh, always that the same color of dress or di even different colors? The question is, in Radha and Krishna, in the, spirit, in the gopis especially, in the spiritual world, do they wear the same color, they wear different colors. They wear different colors. They have a characteristic dress that they're typified by, but they're not limited or restricted by that. Because uh, the meaning of Vaikuntha means no border. There's no border. The word Vaikuntha means, no, means no border, no limitation, no measurement. So there's no limitation there. You read Nectar, Bhaktivar Sarita Sindhu, describes Krishna's dress, dressing in different places. Sometimes he wears a mormukut, he wears a golden crown of higar feathers, sometimes he wears a copper-colored turban. This is described right in the page of Bhaktivar Sarita Sindhu, different times describing Krishna's dress. So he wears a turban sometimes, a crown sometimes, just ties a tie, has a top knot of hair, puts a peacock feather in it, it hangs like crow's feathers, it says it hangs like crow's feathers over his shoulder. But it's not, you know, he, he, has, he has a chatter sometimes, he has no chatter. He has a, the winter time he has a little jacket, you know, a chatter. You know, it's different seasons, he's wearing different things. But these were different colors here in this world. And the Takraji, Ra and Krishna, and Gobi, they, wear, they can wear different colors there. Everyone has their set color, their, their, their logo, or whatever you want to call it. You know, the standard color, but they're not limited to that color. There's no, you have to understand the nature of the spiritual world. There's no limitation. And they have a phrase in English, the sky's the limit. How far is it? Where's the sky in it? It's endless. So love is like that, it's like the sky. It goes, it expands everywhere unlimitedly. It goes on and on. on. They say universal love. Vishwam Purna Sukhayate. There's a phrase, blessing, Ashravad prayer. Vishwam Purna Sukhayate. May the whole universe, may the whole world, Vishwam, like Virata Rup, you know, Vish, Vishwam Purna Sukhayate. May the whole world be full of happiness. Sukha, happiness. The world becomes full of happiness if you're full of happiness. Because <laughs> you are your world. 
<laughs> you are the world. <laughs> You're the beginning and middle of everything, the world. You, everyone lives in their own world. When we go to the spiritual world, we have our own spiritual world. Our own Radha, our own Krishna, our own Rupa Manji, our own Rati Manji, Tati Manji. Everything is individual, everything is personal, and unlimited. No, it's just, there's just one place, Goloka. There's thousands of Goloka spheres. Third canto, Bhagavatam, 15th verse, 15th chapter, 14th verse, I think. It's quoted in Preeti Sandaravana, shade number 10. Jiva Goswami says, the Krishna expands one form, one for, Krishna expands one form of himself for each and every liberated soul. Every soul that gets liberated is one Krishna. My, I, my Krishna. Who is your Krishna? Okay, get out of here. my Krishna. My Krishna. <laughs> one Krishna, one Radha, one Yashoda, all one, one Krishna, everything that goes with it. Everything goes with this whole spiritual world. One, I have my own Yamuna, I have my own Giraj, I have my own Barsai, I have my own Nandagram. No parking problems, no congestion, <laughs> no roadblocks, no road tax, no rickshawas, nothing. I, I just walk everywhere, shade trees, fruit trees. This is a nice proposal. This is the truth. Nice. It's called Mangal Dwani. The sound of cows bellowing is called Mangal Dwani in Veda. It's very, very auspicious. It purifies ether. So when I was when I was Swamani, it's together with uh, Krishna. It's she feels like Rasolas, right? When she's together with him. Right. What she feel? What does Rasolas right? feel like? Ra Ra Rasolas. Sometimes. And when she is separated from him, she feels Babolas. She feels what? Babolas. Rasolas, Babolas. Okay. Yeah. So my question is now, is that we are inspiring for Mancharima. That's Babolas Rati, right? So what is that, that, is that meaning in this Babolas that Radharani feels a little bit like... No, that's, you're mixing up, these aren't the same. Radharani is Babolas in separation. And Krishna Radharani's Rasalas in union is not the same as the Babalas Radhi of the Madri. You're getting confused. The Babalas means that first of all one a nice question. I guess you're asking what is the difference or whatever. So it's coming self evident by your presentation what the question is. Is the Babalas Rati of the Mandris like the Babalas? R Rati, it's not called Babalas, it's called Babalas, which is experience of Radharani's separation. But Radharani is in union with Krishna, she's feeling Sringar Ras, Sringar Rati, which you call Rasulas. So, but the quality of the mantras, one thing is Babalas Rati is a characteristic of their Stai Rati, of their permanent permanent loving mood towards Radharani and Krishna is Babalas Rati. Some people say it's a separate stai rati. My Guru Dei Pandasi Krishna Bhavati says it's a form, it's an expression of Madhura Rati. The stai rati, the mantras is Madhura Rati, amorous love, and the variety of that is, of the mantras particularly, is Babalas Rati. Babalas Rati means whatever Babalas Ulas arise in Radharani, they rise in the mandris, because they have this quality. What is the quality the mandris have? They have bhav tadatmya. Bhav tadatmya means they're one with that bhav. Bhav, yeah, one feeling. with the... One is in feeling. Bhav means feeling, tad means that, and atma, that self. So when Rara is in separation, she feels bhav of, bhav of loss. So that bhav of loss is the expression of maha bhav, not the bhav, bhav of loss rati. It's, that's when her Mahabhav rises to the highest point 
of Madhanakyamava in separation from Krishna. And the manjis are the manjis are Bhav Tradnya, so they're also experiencing that Mahabhava Radharan. Rarani's Bhavalas is Rarani's Bhavalas alone. Only she experiences that. Only she has that extent of Mahabhava. The Mahabhava that all the other Sakis have is, got, is received from Radharani. But Bhavala, Divyan Mahabhava, Madanaki Mahabhava is only Radharani has. And that's what, what, what astounded Uddhava Mahashaya in chapter 47, the 10th canto of Brahma Gita, when he spent three months in Vrindavan with the gobis and the brijvasis observing their intense love, especially Radharani, Chitra Jalta, Udgurna, all these ecstatic symptoms. And he, exp he experienced their Madanaki Mahabhava. That's all I can say about that, what I can understand. You want to add something to that? No, it's actually... It's clear. It's clear what you're saying. Totally clear. But that, that feeling of uh, what, what I personally feel in this moment, that this monetary bath is so, so special, and it always connects us with Lorna. And that means that we also separated from Krishna in the sense of not wanting to be with him, right? We want to be with Radha, not with Krishna. This is what I think, yeah, also. Okay, that's an interesting feel. Basically, there's a... I, I, I feel that I, my Swamini is all. I don't need, I, I like Krishna because of Swamini. Yeah, that's, that's correct. We, we agree with that. <laughs> he said, we, like, we, worship, we care for Krishna because he's her, he's her lover. He's Radharani's lover, that's why we care for Krishna. There's, like, there's a verse in Radharani's Radharani's verse 259. Prabhupada Saraswati, in, he's in Saki Bhav, Manjri Bhav. He's saying, this famous verse 259, right towards the end of the book, Radharas Sudhanidhi. Sudhanidhi. He says, I chant my Gopal Krishna mantra. I worship, I chant the best of, Mama, best of mantras, you know, the best of Nam, Krishna Nam. I worship a Murti of Krishna. I live in Krishna's Dham, Vrindavan. You know, probably in the Saraswati lived over by Kalya. Kalya Da by the bank of Yamuna, that's his Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi you saying. And uh, I do all these things. But while I'm worshiping Krishna in all these different ways, chanting his mantras, doing puja, I read the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the glories of Krishna. All the time, my, my, I'm, I'm, my cherished aspiration that I become a maester of Radharani. So he's saying, Krishna, I'm worshiping you, but oh, to get Radharani. So we say, Hare Krishna, Hare Ram. Oh, my dear Lord Krishna, please engage in Radharani service. <laughs> Most people are saying, oh, Krishna, oh, Radharani, oh, energy of the Lord, please engage in Krishna's service. We don't say that. We say, oh, Hari, oh, Hari, oh, Krishna, oh, Radharaman, you are Bhagavan, please get, you have all powers and all Shakti, and all Yoga, Shura, and everything. Please give me the power to serve Radharani. Oh, Krishna, please engage in Radha's service. That's our prayer. So we're on the same page with that one. <laughs> Radha Thank you for reminding us of what is today with that. One more. Hey, next question? Yes, the next question. From YouTube. YouTube. Russian YouTube. YouTube, Russian YouTube. That's cool. You got an answer in Russian or what? Uh, with all uh, respect, I would like to ask you, what's uh, the symptoms of Guru Bhakti and which, uh, according to which criteria uh, the Shishya can, understand, uh, can um, possess it and have it? Thank you very much for your video and uh, questions and answers. Well, the question, the question is, 
What are the symptoms that a disciple has Guru Bhakti? How, how a disciple can understand. How can he know he has Guru Bhakti? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like asking someone, how do you know you love your mother? What are, the sent what are the symptoms? How do you know you love your mother? What are the symptoms uh, that you love your mother? <laughs> Guru Bhakti means uh, love. What is, what is it? Just take it. Bhakti means love. So, what are the symptoms of love? Love means attachment, means caring, means remembering, means serving, means living for the pleasure of, another, of the other, of the beloved, and looking out for the safety of the beloved, the welfare of the beloved, and always trying to bring happiness to the beloved, and arrange for all the best things to give to the beloved. And depending on the beloved, depending on the lover, on the, on the beloved, and knowing that the lover, the lover depends, the beloved depends on me. So all these things also apply to Guru. Guru depends on a shisha, shisha depends on a guru. The guru doesn't have any shisha, he's not a guru. <laughs> guru means a teacher. If he doesn't have any students, he's, he's not of a job. <laughs> he doesn't have anybody to teach. So the sentence of Guru Bhakti is, first of all, you have a, you have a, somebody, you have a guru. <laughs> In other words, the sentence that you have, you have love for your mother is you have a mother. That's the first point. You have a mother to show your love towards and show your affection towards. So the first thing is establish a relation with the guru. And relationships are based on everything I just said. Relationships are based on service, on dedication, on submission, surrender, help, remembrance, ultimately living, merging one's own identity and the identity of, of the beloved. That's the ultimate expression of love. Rarani lives for Krishna. She, every part of Rarani's existence is for Krishna's happiness. So a, a said a said, a said shishya of a said guru, every part of his existence, her existence, is dedicated to the service and pleasure of guru. That's the ultimate perfection of guru bhakti. That doesn't come easy. You have to find a very special guru to bring out that kind of dedication, that kind of love and attachment. Most people don't have that kind of guru or that kind of heart to have that kind of relationship. Our hearts are cluttered with so many wrong things. <laughs> so many wants and needs. No, it's, 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 it's a backlog, it's a heavy baggage of bad samskaras. <laughs> heavy baggage of bad samskaras. Our samskaras are what forces us to act and think in certain ways. They even speak in certain ways. I don't know if I have Guru Bhakti and I don't know, what's the other part? Guru, I don't, how do I know if I have Guru Bhakti? Great how to understand. What? Symptoms, yes. Sir. Symptoms. How do I know, what are the symptoms of Guru Bhakti? I'm happy. Because love and service of Krishna begins with a Guru. Guru Pada Shraya, Diksha Adi Shikshana, Vishwam Vaya Guru Siva Sada Bhartmana Bhartate. Krishna's way at the end of the line. Krishna's a Priyojan. Yavi Dei is Guru and Vaishnav. Say, Hari Guru Vaishnav Seva. But Hari is the last point, but the last point is mentioned first because that's the primary point. Primary point is first, Hari Seva. Secondary, second thing is Guru, and then third is Vaishnav. But the actual order of sequence of attainment is Vaishnava Seva, Guru Seva, Hari Seva. First you meet and associate with Vaishnavas, then by their mercy you get you find Guru, and by Guru's mercy you attain Krishna Brahm. So Vaishnava Seva, Guru Seva, Hari Seva. So we usually say we should serve Hari Guru and Vaishnava. Because the, first, the most primary thing, the most important thing is to listen first. Because we're all Hari Das. She very much served by Krishna and Niti Das. Krishna Das means Hari Das. There's no such thing as being a Hari Das without being Guru Das. Prabhupada named disciples Guru Das. He gave one disciple Guru Kripa, another disciple Guru Das. 
both great devotees, Guru Krishna, Guru Das, and Guru Kripa. And they were good, great servants of Prabhupada. Or they are, they weren't, they were, they are, they still, they still are. So this is the, this is the main thing. Guru is the main link in the, in the chain of bhakti. Guru bhakti. But the problem is, two things are a problem which block the flow of Guru bhakti for the disciple. One thing is ex ex access to the guru. You never see your guru, never meet your guru. So how can you really develop a loving relationship with someone you never meet, never see? <laughs> a little hard. By Zoom, <laughs> Zoom bhakti, Zoom bhakti, chat bhakti, WhatsApp bhakti, Telegram bhakti, Instagram bhakti, this bhakti, that bhakti. It's called Paricharya Seva Parisanga, personal service to Guru, meeting the Guru, having the Guru laugh with you and chastise you and yell at you. It's, it's mercy. <laughs> it makes life good. It makes you develop your love. If you're, mar if you're married to someone you never see and never meet, how much marriage will get off the ground there? I don't know. <laughs> Won't fly too high in the sky that way. So the biggest problem is lack of association with the Guru, no intimacy. Vishrambhena Guru Seva means intimate service to Guru. Vishrambhena. Vishrambha, without Shramba. It's hardly Seva. But how can you have a heart if you don't know the person? You have to be with the person, you have to observe the person. You have to feel the Guru, you have to observe the Guru. You have to serve, you have to serve the Guru, observe, observe the Guru, observe the Guru, feel the Guru, see the Guru. And you understand what's, what, what is Guru. And then love is a natural byproduct of Sangha, association. But one thing is lack of association with Guru, the other is envy of the disciple. Irshya. Envy is a very powerful enemy of bhakti. Generally, we're envious of those who are above us. We compete, with, we have rivalry and compete with those equal to us. And we look down with disdain at those below us. Oh, you, you're no good. You can't sing like I can sing. <laughs> I'm such a good singer. This is the three, three modalities, three modalities of Kali Yuga brains. <laughs> Envy those people above us. Compete with those people equal to us and look down at those people lower than us, inferior to us. But in devotional line, devotional perspective, we're supposed to we're supposed to worship those of worship those above us and associate and hear with those above us. We're supposed to make friends and share love with those equal to us. We're supposed to give mercy to those below us. Quite a different worldview. All those three three modalities of a spiritual personality or operating on an envy-free free principle. If you're free from envy, you can favor and benefit those people below you. If you're free from envy, you can share love and give gifts and give prasad with those equal to you. If you're free from envy, you can appreciate those above you and serve them and hear from them and worship them. This is a devotional outlook, devotional attitude. So this, most disciples are victims of envy, of the bad Bad karma. Kam Aisha Kura Aisha Raja Gamuna Samudala. Envy is, is results in anger. Envy is a bad thing. Rasvasvi Chinara V Sunni China. We're supposed to think we're very small. If we have intelligence, we'll realize that everybody, everybody, every living entity has something better than me. If you can only, if you can only see that everyone, every, every human being around me has something better than me, every living entity or entity around me is something, has something better than me. Look at that lizard. He's better than me. I can't climb and hang upside down on that ceiling. 
Hey, you're pretty cool. You're extra lizard. Can you teach me to do that? No, nah, it's not worth it. I did a lot of tabachi to get here, you know. <laughs> it's not worth it to become a lizard. It's better to be a human being. Every living day has something better. You see, you go to a lake and see fish swimming underwater, having a good time, enjoying. Oh, I wish I could do that. I can't do that. It's like, come on. Break the Saman. Samadan. Cool down. You fall asleep on the job. <laughs> Fan ran out of power. <laughs> Everyone's better. Uh, who has that idea? Nobody has that idea. Because of the hunkar, I'm, 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 I'm a good looking girl. And I'm a cool guy, you know. This is Shrikamaya. Maya has two problems. He's covering Avaran Shakti and covering and throwing. I don't know what the other one is. Avaram means covering. Avaram Shakti, she covers our brain so we can't think straight. <laughs> Avarani, what's the other one called? Avarana. Avaran, Shakti, and Brakshat Atmika Shakti. Brakshat Atmika. Anyway. We're covered, that's for sure. <laughs> but is, is that correct to say, like, that sentence? Wait a second, let me, let me, start, let me start a new file here. We have a new question bubbling up here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> is it correct to guru say? Is like a, guru is like a navigator, but he's not the guru. That's correct? No. No? Guru is the goal? <laughs> He said, <laughs> he said question mark. The question is, the guru, the statement is, the guru is like a navigator, he's not the goal. Is this correct? I said, it's not correct. And then it's the first said, the guru is the goal? <laughs> yes, the guru is the goal. <laughs> because the guru has a sonic root and a sitter root. Guru Dave has a sonic root and a sitter root. And Saiva has a Sada group and a Siddha group. Siddha means the Sarup city, means the spiritual form of the Saiva and the spiritual form of the Guru will be together in Golgurindavan. The Guru will be saying, hey, roast these nuts. Rarai <laughs> 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 wants some roasted cashews. It's winter time. She wants to roast cashews. Oh, I learned how to do that when it's Sada Guru. Now I can, I can do it. Okay, you learn Sada Guru, now do it in Siddha group. Go in the kitchen. But you don't have a gas store, you have wood. Cedar wood, aloe wood, you have to fan it and make it hot. And not so easy as a gas stove. Had to get cow dung, throw a cow dung in there. And, you know. So, the, is the guru only the navigator? Because in Love of the Canto of Bhagavatam, says Karnadara, says the guru is the captain of the ship. The guru is my captain, and I, this body is a ship. When I go from when I go from New York to Paris and I get out of the boat and I jump off the captain, I don't see the captain again. So the guru is my captain. He takes my body across the, across the sun, Sara Sagar. I get to my kundal. Goodbye, guru. Get out of here. Thanks a lot. No, he's still there. <laughs> he's here. It's what he's called, Sadguru. Chaku dano diliye janmi janmi prabhu se. He's my, he's my guru, life after life, and life after life after life. He's my life after life guru and life after death guru. And after the final death, there's eternal life in the spiritual world. The guru is there as my Seki root, Manji Sri Guru. So guru is now a navigator. He's one, he's, he's one of the goals. The primary goal is Krishna and Radharani. That's why everybody knows that. The brain state of Radha Krishna, the goal isn't the brain state of Krishna. I mean, uh, that's also true. But the goal isn't the brain state of a guru. The brain state of a guru is going on right now. <laughs> that's the goal of my life. But the, when I, if I attain that goal by serving guru with love in this life, then I attain the brain state of Radha Krishna, Goloka.
and Guru will be right there assisting me, and I'll be, I'll be, he'll be assisting me, and I'll be assisting him, and, and our praying Savior, Radha Krishna. So Guru is the goal, he's a navigator and the goal. Krishna is also a navigator. Guru is a navigator, Krishna is a navigator. 11th Canto Bhagavatam, chapter 29, verse 5. <laughs> Uda Mahasha, Acharya Chaitya Babusha, Sadgatim, Sadgatim Vyanakti. Krishna, you're so kind, you appear externally as the Acharya Diksh Guru and internally as the Andriyami Chaitya Guru. So Guru is a navigator inside the heart, and Guru is a navigator outside the heart. There are two captains on your ship. One captain gets drunk because the captains always drink. So one captain drinks too much, the other captain takes over. <laughs> too much sweet rice, I mean. <laughs> One captain eats too much sweet rice, he can't navigate, he can't navigate, he can't find his way home. <laughs> Falls in a ditch. <laughs> in the case of Raghunadas Goswami, his guru was Yadunanda Acharya, right? Yeah, his next guru was Yadunanda Acharya mm -hmm. and way to Parivar. So, but uh, there was now, that was in his Sadakriya. But he, in his, in his Sarasa, Sarasa Stava, he is giving, in his Sadakriya, a prayer to the Guru Manchari which is uh, Rupa Manjri. Uh, Rupa Manjri is Guru Manjri for all, all Manjris. Rupa Manjri? Eh? Oh. Rupa Manjri is the Guru Manjri for all Manjris. She, Mukya Manjri. Right. But every, every, par, every, every, devote, every disciple has his own Mukya Manjri. I got my way to Paribar. The way to Paribar, Mukya Manjri is Tulsi Manjri, Rati Manjri, Raghunath Goswami. Raghunathas so Swami and Sadhak Rupa, he's always praying to Rupa Mantri. Because when Raghunathas came to Vrindavan, it was Rupa Mantri that put him on the path of Mantri Bhav. Rupa and Sadhak met him and gave him a place in Radhakun, and Rupa Goswami taught him all the t uh, fine details of Mantri Bhav Upasana, how to worship Radha Krishna the Mantri. was taught by Rupa Mantri. So every one of his books, he has a prayer to Rupa Mantri. Only oh, one book, he has a prayer, yeah, none of that's Vilakusa Mantri. She shows Dikshu. Rupa Manjri is a Shiksha Guru in Sadhak Guru, and a Shiksha Guru in Siddharu, and a Shiksha Guru in Siddharu. Yadunanda Acharya is Guru? I don't know. I, I don't know. He's in the way to Parivar. He's, he's initiated by the way to Charya, let me say that. So he's in the family of a way to. He's also in Manjri. I don't know. I, I haven't read his Manjri name. I would assume so. But, you know, six, sometimes six goes, the people say, well, six goes strong, he's who can answer Pranali? So I asked my guru today the same question. He said, there are already very much trees there on the eight. They are the eight to say Pranali. Rupa Goswami is Rupa Manjari. Raghunath Das is Tulsi Manjari, or he's also most commonly known as Tulsi Manjari. Sango Swami is Labanga Manjri, Raghunath Das, Raghunath Bhatta is Guna Manjri, no, Gopal, Raghunath Bhatta is Rasa Manjri, Gopal Bhatta is Guna Manjri, Chiyu Goswami is Vilas Manjri, Krishna Skaraj is Kasturi Manjri, Lagnath Goswami is Manjulali Manjri, he's Rasta Manjris. Seventh Goswami is Krishna Skaraj, and eighth Goswami is Lagnath Goswami. That's in Gaudiya Sampradaya. In some place, they, somebody wrote a book called The Seven Goswamis, Bhakti Nantakura. But, but outside of that place, in Gaudiya Sampradaya, The Seven Goswamis, Krishna Skaviraj. So you, you're okay with that? You accept my proposal that Guru is not only a navigator, Guru is also the goal? Yes. I well, one of, the goal, one of the goals. Goal, for me, the first goal is Radha. <laughs> <laughs> Who's arguing with that? <laughs> but I mean, all you're saying is Radha Radha all the whole time. But I think I, that, that meditation goes to Rupa Mantra. Okay. So that is the connection to Radha. That's like I feel. 
Yeah, my connection. Anyway, there is like a lot, like you say, guru, of course. When you have that manchuri in between the guru manchuris, it then connects you to rupa manchuri. Oh, it's perfect. But if that is not happening, then it's for me a little like questionable. Because you see in a, in a you, know, you know what I mean? You understood what I mean? Yeah, I understand what you mean. Let's look at the Shastra. In the writings of Narottam Das Thakur in Pratana, he says, when will, I stand, when will I stand by my Guru Saki? Guru Saki is Manjalali. Loknath Goswami is the Guru of Narottam Das. And the Loknath Goswami is Manjalali. Is Manjalali. So in Pratana, Narottam says, when will I stand by my Guru? Behind Ruba Mandri, Ruba Mandri, Rarani say, Ruba Mandri, who's that cute little Mandri standing behind you? Oh, this is, this is a Mandri, this is a Shishya Manjulali Mandri. Let me introduce you to her. Her name is Chamkak Mandri. Narutan Das Thakur Chamkak. And I brought, her to, I brought her to introduce you to her service. So Ruba Mandri is introducing on behalf of the Guru, the Guru Saki of Narutan, is local. Ruba Mandri is introducing. Him, her to Radharani. So the go between there's Guru, there's Saki Guru, there's Sasaiva, there's Ruva, then there's Radharani. That's the hierarchy how it works. Or that's that's the scenario that's brought out by Praja Narutandas. He's one of our Mahajans for our Siddhanta, Tava Siddhanta. Go to your question. Because you know, we're we're way to Paribar, so we we draw a line to to Tulsi Mandri, Tulsi Mandri and Vishaka, our Yuteshri Vishaka, and it's another Paribar Yuteshri group leader is Lalita, and the chief Mandri is Rupa, but but even for us, our chief Mandri is Tulsi Mandri, Rati Mandri, but above Rati Mandri is Rupa Mandri, because Rupa Mandri is above all the Mandris. So Rupa Mandri is so she's like primal, so everyone's always praying Rupa Mandri. Shiru Mantri Pada, you know. That's the cure way. That's the cure way. <laughs> that, yeah, well, that, you, we're following Raghunath Das, we can't help, we can't, because everywhere is praying Rupa Mantri. All is, all is Stavali, has so many prayers Rupa Mantri. And one, 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 one in Vilakusa Mantri, I think there's two or three prayers Rupa Mantri in one, one prayer. At least two, I think, in that prayer. First, first verse is the Rupa Mantri. Another one also. I threw a bunch of another one to Rupa Goswami. Okay, going right along here. Oh yeah, thank you for that. This a nice question, Dwight's asking, when we go to Goloka, Vrindavan, are we only going to be engaged in Guru Seva? Don't we get a chance to serve Radharani directly? The answer is we get to do, you get to do all services to Radharani. When you, when you, first of all, the Guru, the Guru, the Guru we're speaking about, the Guru will give you a specific service to render to Radharani. This would be your one special service. The brushing her eyes, hair, decorating her, bathing her, painting her feet, putting on tea lock, whatever different seva, sevas might be there. So that will be your nitya seva. You'll do that every day, all the time, forever. Any opportunity to do that service, do that service. They can do any number of services. 
So when you read books of our Acharyas, like Govinda Lila Marita, Vilav Kusumanjali, Ukali Kavalari, or uh, uh, Sankarva Kapa Dhruva by Vishnu Chakravarti Pad, or these type of books, they describe sevas, like Vilav Kusumanjali describes the seva of Raghunath Das in his Manjari form as Tulsi Manjari. And in that book, Vilaku Savanjari, which is one poem from Savali, Tulsi Manjari is doing all the status for our running from the time she wakes up to the time she takes rest. Now you read, that has 104 verses in it. You read Sankalpa Kalpa by Vishnu, it also has 104 verses. And it's modeled, it's modeled, Sankalpa Kalpa by Vishnu, is modeled exactly after Sankalpa Kalpa And there, Vishnu Chakravarti, was Hari Vallabha, I mean, not Hari Vallabha, his Manjri name is, I forget, Vinod 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 I think Vinod Vallari, Vinod Vallari Manjri, Vishnu Chakravarti's Manjri name, Vinod Vallari Manjri, and she's, off, she's offering all, all the services that, that Tulsi Manjri is offering. So she's rushing around on his hair, she's bathing, she's helping dress her, she's ordinary, putting her cudgel on, putting her lipstick on, putting her bangles on, cooking, helping her cook, carrying her paraphernalia, everywhere, doing all the saves. So the individual sadhika who attains prem against the Siddhaya Mantri Shru, he can also do all those services, alone or with his guru, or with Rupa Mantri, with Tulsi Mantri, or with other Mantris. He can do it alone, or with his guru Seki Mantri, or with his guru Seki and Paran Guru Seki, or any number of combinations. There's no limitation. These books, Vilaka Suvanjali and Sankalpa Kalpa Juma, show that, show that in Sadaka Rupa meditation, we can meditate in my Mantri Shrub. I'm individually rendering all the services to Radharani myself. Very nice. And in, in, in Nityadam, Galaka Vrindavan, we can also do all those savings. So, there, Guru Seva here, it may be severed from Krishna Seva, but there, Guru Seva means serving Radharani. You understand? There is a long way away. It's a long way to go. Always keep the objective, always keep the goal in the heart and mind. That will drive us forward. It's not so easy. Don't stop. There's <clears throat> I'll tell a story about determination. There are two sages sitting under two trees. One sage was sitting under Ashwat Briksha. Ashwat Briksha means people tree. The Raja Parivar is people patra, Tulsi. I mean, if it's Tulsi patra, it should be like a peep leaf from a people, people tree on the nose. One person sitting on that, one person, one other sada was sitting on an Imli, Imli tree, Amla tree, Amalaki. And Narada Muni came there and met the sage, uh, met the two sages. And the two sages asked the question, Aramuni, when will I get liberated? When will I go to the spiritual world? When will I see Vishnu? And he told, he told the one yogi, Rishi, sitting under the, under the ashwa tree, he said, when all the leaves of this tree fall off, then you'll get liberated. He said, all the leaves, there's so many thousands of leaves here. 
I have to take thousands of births to all these for oh, forget it. <laughs> he read he threw down his commandalo and went down to the valley and started calming throwing enjoyed life. He said, I'll never tell you it's too it takes too many lifetimes. Then he went to the other 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 Rishi devotee under under Amalaki tree. And Amalaki tree, we have one right here, mine as you can see it. It has one leaf. Each leaf is divided into 100 sub leaves. <laughs> has one leaf, has one leaf, has itsy bitsy little leaves attached to that leaf. So it's like on the, on the Ashwa tree, on the Ashwa people tree, there's like 10,000 leaves. And on, on the Amalaki tree, there's 100,000 leaves. <laughs> so the Rishi under the Amalaki tree said, Narada Muni, when am I get liberated? See this Amalaki tree? All of these fall off this tree, you'll get liberated. Oh, that's not so long. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. <laughs> he just kept chanting. Because he said, oh, that's not very far. Every leaf I'll get closer and closer to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So this is a story about determination. We should have the determination of the sage under the Avalaki tree, <laughs> not the sage under the Ashwa tree. <laughs> Utsa nishtya dharyat. Utsa enthusiasm. Nishtha steadiness. Dharyat. What is dharyat? Dharyat means humility. Patience, patience. Enthusiasm and patience. Enthusiasm without patience is passion. <laughs> enthusiasm with patience is bhakti. <laughs> You may be enthusiastic to clean your room, you're running around crazy and cut your foot or something. <laughs> That's passion. Right? Enthusiasm for bhakti. Enthusiasm for... With patience is bhakti. Enthusiasm with patience. With patience is bhakti. I know the goal is impossible. I know it's so far away, but still I, I'm going for it. <laughs> there is an Utkali Kavalari, verse 34 and 35. There's a famous verse that are always quoted by Nazas Baba. Rupa Goswami says, He said, even the greatest saints, the greatest, greatest rishis and saints have done tapasya for hundreds of years. They can't even see the tip of Radha and Krishna's toenails. But I'm so foolish that I'm trying to attain Radha and Krishna in this life. That's verse 34. Next verse is, oh, right, then, then Radha Krishna say, why, why, then they, they, that's verse 34. Then Radha Krishna replied to Rupa Goswami, say, well, if it's so hard to attain our low feet, why are you trying? So then he replies in verse 35. He says, what can I, what is my fault, Radha Krishna? What is my fault? Your beauty is so incredible. Your lilies are so sweet and attractive. You can't, you can't enchanted my heart and captured my mind. Enchanted my mind and captured my heart. What is my fault? I just can't help but keep running after you. No matter whether, whether I'm going to win or lose, I'm going to keep running. This is Rupa Goswami. Those two prayers are, verse are very important for Asaka and Ragmar. Keep, st keep steady. Keep patient. Verse 34 and 35, Utkalika Valari. What is my fault? It's your fault. You're so beautiful and attractive and sweet and charming and playful and pranks, pranks, funny and stealing and robbing and lying and cheating, all these cool things you do and drink and steal people's clothes and all. <laughs> steal girls' clothes and run up in a tree and, oh, come on. There's no end to your pranks and fun games. And I love it. I love you. I love everything you do. It was my fault. It's your fault. You're a Christian, not me. <laughs> you did it to me. I didn't. I, you, you hypnotized me. I didn't hypnotize you. It's your fault. You put, you put a whammy on me. <laughs> As some guy tells his girlfriend. <laughs> she, she looked at him. Oh, I'm in love. <laughs> You're lost. <laughs> lost and found. <laughs> okay, what else do we have? What time is it? I have a watch? I have a watch.
Hi, 15. Oh, Goranga. Come on, Shari Baba, Bali. Bali, I just said that if you have not seen a group and if we are not bad and we are not talking enough, so we cannot have relations with him and we cannot serve him better. So if we see the history of his form, uh, Prabhupada instructed uh, his disciples that after my departure, after my departure, uh, I can be called as a guru. Uh, so, uh, Prabhupada instructed his uh, disciples, no? uh, I can be called as a guru. So, so after Prabhupada disciples, those will become his disciples. So, how can they make his relation with Prabhupada and how can they serve them better? What's the question? The Bhagavad Gita heard? Anyone heard? Actually, yeah, I don't hear it so good, so you have to speak loud. You said that uh, if, if, we, if, if, if we do not meet our uh, uh, spiritual master and we have not talked to him and we have not seen, seen him, so we cannot have a good relation. No, you're not, no, you can't. It's difficult. I would say it's difficult. Yes. It can be very close. I mean, it's not even like that. It can be also very close. I mean, these, these transcendental matters, there's no hard and fast rule. But generally, the charyas, they talk about Vani Seva, Vapa Seva, Pari Sangha Seva, Pari Charya Seva. It's right in Bhakti Sandara, Vajiva Goswami. Pari Sangha, Pari Charya, Pari Charya means personal service to Guru cooking, cleaning, helping. And he says it's very necessary to Vapa Seva. It cements and deepens the relationship of Guru Shishi Sambandha. But if it's not there, you can still have a relationship based on seva and service and separation. Pavani seva. So we can have response from... Hmm? So, so we, we, can, we, can, we can get response. Everything is transcendent. There's no limitation of transcendental power and influence. You have a, a relation with Guru and you're serving in separation. You look, look at Gopal Kumar and Brihad Bhagavatam. You met his Guru once. You got Gopal Mantra, eight silver Gopal Mantra, or ten, eight or ten silver Gopal Mantra. And he traveled, he, he traveled all over the universe in different layers of consciousness. He would stay, he would stay in one place and go over down, and he shared Gopal Mantra. He entered all different layers of consciousness, and all different experiences, just by the prabhav or the power of the Mantiksha Mantra. He got, didn't get any shikshas from his guru, he didn't do any say, he didn't massage the guru's feet, didn't bathe the guru's feet, didn't roast nuts for him. <laughs> he didn't do anything for the guru. Didn't do any guru seva. He just chanted his mantra. That was his seva. He chanted his diksha mantra. And there's a verse in Vamana Kalpa quoted in Bhakti Sandara. Yo mantra guru sakshat, guru sakshat harisvayam. It's from Vamana Kalpa. Yo mantra guru sakshat. The, mantra, the diksha mantra is directly the guru. Yo mantra, yo mantra, Yo mantra guru sakshat, guru sakshat harisvayam. It's Vamana Kalpa. It's quoted in Bhakti Sundara by Sri Jiva Goswami. But the Diksha mantra is the guru. So you chant the Diksha mantra, you're directly associated with the guru. You have a picture of your guru. What about, what about Ekalavya and Mahabharat? He made a murti of uh, Dronacharya and became a better archer than Arjun. And then, you know, Arjun heard about it. He told Dronacharya to ask for Guru Dakshin because Dronacharya liked Arjun more. So Dronacharya went to Ekalavya and said, you didn't give me any Dakshin. What's, what Dakshin you want? Give me your thumb. Give me your Angali, this Angali. And without, without this Angali, you can't shoot arrows. Yeah, you should go like, you know. No thumb, you can't. So that finished his, that fin finished his archery career. <laughs> by Guru Kriva, by Guru Kriva, he got power to defeat Arjuna in archery. By Guru Dakshin, he lost all the mercy. <laughs> he lost all the power. So even without, you just, even not even meeting a Guru or having instruction by the Guru, you can attain perfection. By, just by the mantra. What's your question? Many people say that 
If we have surrendered to Krishna, so one day we will get, we will attain the lotus feet of Krishna. So, uh, so, and Lotus Swami says that we should be very eager to uh, uh, attain uh, love of God, uh, of God Prakti. Huh? So, there are two, some, some, some people say that we should be patient and some people say we should be very eager. So, what is the uh, right? Shivi, wherever you are, you'll be. <laughs> In other words, the goal of life is praying Seva Radha and Krishna Vrindavan. Gaudi Vaishnava, the goal is Radha and Krishna, Dwarkadish Krishna, Mathura Krishna. The goal is Krishna Vrindavan. Radhya Bhagavan, Rajesh Chaitanya, Sri Dham Vrindavan, Tadam Vrindavan, Ramya Kachiru Pasana Brajavi. Worship Krishna in the mood of the Gobis and, and attain Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan and Gobi Bhav. And the state of Radha and Krishna. This is the goal of life. And more specifically, you focus on Radha Dasyam, service Radha. So, as much as you catch that up, as much as you realize that, that's how much you'll be determined, and that's how much you'll be enthusiastic. Patience is just, patience is just, patience means this you're willing to wait as long as it takes. That's all. But while you're waiting, you're, you're crazy, you're, you're crazy with enthusiasm. What does Daya mean? Daya means I accept this the long way. I'm, I'm, I'll wait, I'll wait. While I'm waiting, I'm not going to sit on my ass and sleep. <laughs> I work hard to serve Guru and Krishna, Hari Guru and Vaishnava. Sleep as little as I can, eat as little as I can, and serve as much as I can within my capacity. Here in Chan, remember, Shravan Kirtan Vishwasana. Follow my Guru's order. If you're, so, if, you're so, if you're so enthusiastic, you don't sleep and eat. If you're really excited about something, you forget about eating and sleeping. You go to some sports game, you're watching for two hours. Oh, I didn't eat anything. I didn't, didn't sleep. You fall asleep in a rugby match, you know. Yeah, <laughs> this doesn't happen. So if you're enthusiastic about something, then eating and sleeping diminish automatically. Oh, you say, oh, I'm doing this Lila Svarn, it's so nice. I'm going to, when I wake up tomorrow, I'm going to chant, do Lila Svarn, I can't wait to get up tomorrow. So, I, so I'm excited to go to sleep and get up early and, and, and chant and meditate on Lila So then that enthusiasm makes you do as many savings as you can. Everyone can ask a limitation, what you, what you want to do and what you can do, but it's not always the same. We want to do this much, we can do this much. But we should always want well, we should always want to do this much, this much seva. But at the end of the day we only do this this much seva. <laughs> every day starts, today's new day, I'm gonna do this much seva. At the end of the day, I did this much seva. I tried. Trying is the main thing. It's so only Krishna gives the power. If Krishna wants you to have a good day, have a good day. If he doesn't, you have a bad day. <laughs> Sometimes when everything, nothing works right, your mind, you sit down and chat, your mind's going crazy. <laughs> Sometimes your mind is tame and nice and cooperative. Have a nice day. It's all Krishna's mercy. Sometimes you have a very nice, amazing day of meditation, and for two days in a row, and three or four days, nothing. And It's just part of the play. <laughs> we, can't, we, can't, we can't turn back and we can't stop. So, you can't turn back means you have to keep going forward. You can't stop means you have to keep moving, keep working, keep serving. There's no stopping, there's no turning back. We've gone too far. Bhagavati, you've gone too far. You can't stop now. You, can't, you have too far to go and you can't go back. What to do? Keep going. With a smile on your face. <laughs> it's tough. Well, long we cry, and public we smile. You know? We cry in our solitude, and public, oh, hi, <laughs> <laughs> What's with you? I'm sorry, I forgot to stop crying. <laughs> I, forgot to leave, I forgot to leave my crying at home. I brought my crying out to the street. 
Take your crying back home. And I come out here. Ah. No one says it's going to be easy. No one says that yoga is easy. Yoga is not, even just touching your toes is hard. What does it speak of bhakti yoga? <laughs> Can't even touch your toes. What does it speak of bhakti yoga? Touching your toes is so hard after you cross 50. <laughs> what about bhakti yoga? <laughs> Jai Jai Shri Hare Krishna. Jai 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 Ho. Jai Ho. Jai sweets today? Who made? You made? She made. You made. That's a team of it. It tastes like spaghetti. It tastes like pizza and buckwheat mixture. <laughs> one's Russian, one's Italian. They made sweets together. I said they taste like buckwheat and pizza mixed together. <laughs> it's a bad joke. I have to do it. <laughs> anyway, this is a tent. <laughs> It rained last night. This morning. Good thing your roof is tied down, otherwise you'd be flying off. Everybody's roof flew off the other night. The wind was blowing. This knit tied down. Uh, there's knit tied down behind me. The roof flew off. Oh, no, there was, was no sure it went. And the guy next door, the lumber, the, the luxury wall, the furniture wall, his roof flew off. <laughs> Dangerous. Okay, anything more? Net question? No, wait, wait, we got a question here. Yeah. Um, 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 we, um, sometimes we, we do some Vaishnava Seva. Um, Only sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, don't do it too much. <laughs> and uh, to do real Seva, we better as that we have some love to this Vaishnava. Uh, so, how to, de to develop love to Vaishnava? How to develop love for Vaishnava? Or it is just manifested by Krishna, like by Master. <laughs> how to develop love for Vaishnava? Because we see then Upanishamrita, the fourth verse, he says, Tadati Pratikrinati, Punkte Bhuja, Tejeva. Rupa Goswami describes six ways to express love towards Vaishnava. Priti said Dakshana. Priti means love. Six ways to express love. One is to give gifts to Vaishnava, to receive gifts. Give her son, receive her son. Reveal your mind and, and listen to them, reveal their minds. Three confidential subjects help each other. So in these ways, these are six ways to develop love. But basically, there's different kinds of people in this world. Jiva Goswami says there's two ca true categories of people. There's ragi, 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 what do you say? Ragi Vichar, no, ragi, ragi Pradhan and Vichar Pradhan. Ragi, ragi Pradhan means one has, 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 has love as his nature. One is Vichar, one is, one is always his predominant nature is always mental. Some people are hard, hardly oriented, some people are mentally oriented. So mentally oriented is vichar, vichar predominant. They're predominated by vichar. Vivek, vichar, weighing, discrimination. So they don't, they don't, they're not very loving type persons. So you say, how I love Vaishnavas. If it's not your nature to be a loving person, you won't be able to love Vaishnavas either. It's something, it's a nature that we get from Birth after birth, we develop a certain guna and karma. And the 13th chapter of Gita is verse, Karmana David, no, Karnam guna sangha sat sana sat jona jamasu. We get a particular birth is caused by our last life's activities. Karnam guna sangha sat. According to association with particular modes of nature, we get a particular birth in a yoni. Karnam guna sangha sat sat asat yoni jamasu. We take birth in a particular yoni, good or bad yoni. 
you know, Sattvic Yoni or Tamasic Yoni, you know, good person, bad person. So we become like that. We, we're, by nature, we're loving persons. We're outgoing, we're caring, we're loving. So it's easy to direct that nature towards Vaishnavas. We have that ragi, loving, caring nature. But we're intro introverted and selfish and egoistic and uncaring. <laughs> we can't, that's our nature, and it's going to be with us till we die. So you can officially try to love by following, giving gifts, and, but it's not your nature. If you're not a loving person, you can't fake it. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you know, it's not everybody's, we're not all clones, everybody has different natures due to our sun scars that we bought from many, so many lifetimes that cause our guna sabab. Our sabab, our nature is caused by our guna and karma. So what we are, what we are, we we take what we have, we offer to Krishna. If we're if we're introvert, introvert and analytical, and selfish, then we just study shastra and do our own bhajan and stay alone. If we're outgoing and extrovert. It's called extrovert introvert. Extrovert outgoing, friendly, loving. Then we try to study shastra and spread the knowledge, teach, teach, help others, guide others, love others. Just be yourself. Don't don't be what you aren't. Be whatever you are, but be for Krishna and be pure. Don't, don't be any sin or anything. We have to, we have to follow the basic principles of, of yoga, yogic purity. We have to follow. Our nature you can't change. Svabhava is with you until you die. If you're a cranky kid when you're five years old, you'll be a cranky kid when you're 55. Let's, you look around you. People are the same. I know him devotees for 47 years. I met him 47 years ago and are the same way today. Exactly the same. I haven't changed at all. Even the Gobis criticized Krishna and Rasa. The Gobis, when they're separated from Krishna, one Gobi said to another, the sages are right. Hey, go, hey, Lalita Sagi, the sages are right when they say that it's very difficult to change one's nature. Krishna has always been cruel to ladies. We heard from Puramasi, every time he takes birth in different avatars, he's always cruel to the ladies. When he was Ron Chandra, he cut off Shafarnika's nose. When he was a baby, he killed Putna. And, you know, and that's in that. And when, he was, when he was a young boy, he saw the clothes of the virgin girls. He's always cruel to women. That's his nature. <laughs> so he says very difficult. That's Shabab. Shabab means my nature. My Bob. <laughs> Shabab. Yeah, you can't, you know, you, you put a thread on your neck and now you're a Brahmin. That's not, that doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's instant Brahmin. <laughs> it's very difficult to turn a frog into a swan. <laughs> doesn't matter what we are, the most, doesn't matter what we are, we just be Krishna's devotee. Krishna accepts every kind of devotee. That's the beauty of Krishna. We have to try to change. We have to try to change. We just have to try to love Krishna. And love the devotees whatever way you can. Just appreciate devotees. You know, you don't, if you mix up with devotees, you make offenses. The main thing, the main thing that we want to show your love and devotion for devotees is don't offend them. Minimally, don't offend them. There's six aparats, six aparats mentioned in Skanda Pran. Six Vaishnava rods. One is not to feel happy when you see a Vaishnava. Everybody feels that. Like some, some sannyasi walks, approaches the Grihasta, and the guy has money, rich Grihasta in the temple. Oh, and the guy says, here comes that Swami. Or they see this new Swami comes into the temple. And the rich Grihasta says, oh God, oh look that Swami, oh God. I wish he wasn't here. He's going to probably ask you for a donation. <laughs> so he's really unhappy to see that Swami. <laughs> he hides, he goes and hides so he doesn't see him. <laughs> but you should be happy when you see a Vaishnava. Not like you're going to tell, oh, there's so and so. I don't like that person. I wish he didn't come to the program. It's an offense not to, be a ha not to feel happy when you see a Vaishnava Vaishnavi. 
At least you're dancing. Okay, you're unhappy all day and all night. Okay, that's normal life. People are unhappy day and night. But when you see a Vaishnava, pretend to be happy at least. Oh, nice to see you. Hi. Oh, send my face and try Vaishnava Kijai. Try Krishna. Then you go in room. <laughs> This be wherever you are. If you're loving, love people. If you're not, just respect. If you don't love them, at least respect. If you can't love and serve Vaishnavas with an open, clean, caring heart, then just respect them, keep a distance, keep it yourself, respect them, respect them for what they represent and that they're worshiping Krishna and their great contributions to the world. And leave it at that. Keep it neutral you. But post positively Appreciate the sight of Vaishnavas, uh, whoever they are, wherever they are, from wherever they are from. Respect, we always say respect all, love all, serve all. This is a healthy attitude. A atti healthy attitude. Don't make enemies, don't have enemies. I have these three mon they have these statues of three monkeys. You ever see statues of three monkeys? <laughs> What does it mean? Don't see anything bad. Don't hear anything bad. Don't speak anything bad. There are three monkeys. <laughs> you ever see statues like that? Yeah. Monkeys going like this. <laughs> we can relate to that because we live in Vrindavan. We know all about monkeys. <laughs> I said, Fred, I asked somebody from Delhi, can you tell me some interesting news? And she said, yeah, there's interesting news now from Vrindavan. Because from Delhi, people come regularly to Vrindavan. So she said, five years ago, when we came to Vrindavan and someone stole a pocketbook or stole glasses, we used to give them one f box of fruity juice, one box, and we would get our, they would throw our glasses back. Over the last couple of years, we have, we have to give them two boxes. <laughs> but now, the latest news last weekend, they want one half liter bottle. They want one 500 milliliters of fruity juice, or a big bottle. They want a big plastic bottle. If you don't give them a big plastic bottle, because one would have already got a glass of salt, they, they gave two fruities, the monkey said no. And she went, she went and got the full bottle, the monkey took and gave the glasses. The start, it started with bananas. When I was in 1992, I lived in Radha Dhamma, 1992, I lived in Sevakunj, Radha Dhamma, Ramundir, and banana, one banana would get work in your glasses. Then it evolved from one banana to two bananas to three bananas to six bananas, then to one fruity, then two fruities. Now it's half the fruity. <laughs> in five years, you had to give a whole case of fruities. <laughs> There's some ladies in this room and so Monkeys are a big part of the Katawa here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> One time I was visiting Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj in 2003 or I don't know, sometime there in Mayapur, nearby Ishkan Temple. Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj had a, had a mandir, Radha Gopinath mandir. He was lying in bed looking out the window. He says, see, I'm looking out this window, and there's a coconut, there's a palm tree there, coconut tree. And all day long, I'm looking at this coconut tree. And I see, I watched some birds were born, and a mother bird is training her baby bird how to fly. She flies to the branch, and she calls the baby, come fly up here, fly up here. He's telling me, he said, you live in Vrindavan. When you, you have to be careful when you do bhajan. Don't think of the monkeys when you do bhajan. <laughs> so you're in Vrindavan. We don't have so many monkeys over here. You have so many monkeys in Vrindavan. So he asked me, do you think of monkeys when you're doing bhajan? He asked me, do you think of monkeys when you do bhajan? I, I try to avoid them, but sometimes they come in my house, you know. <laughs> and you jump on a tree and come in the veranda. And, they said, well, try not to think of monkeys when you're doing your bhajan. <laughs> so the mind, Shanshahimana Krishna, the mind is like a 
Chancho Vander Jumping Monkey. Okay, what other questions we have here? Let's get back to the reality here. Okay. Uh, for example, this pet monkey, and this monkey uh, remembers to ask the kakati, and so we pass it to monkey from each other. Radharani, yeah, Radhakrishna, she because says Radharani has a pet monkey, an old, old pet monkey named Kakati. And Kakati comes in the Kunja, Kunja Bangalila, every morning before sunrise, and she screeches out. What does she screech out? Jatila. She says, Jatila, Jatila, Jatila. The way monkeys talk. Oh, go, he says, oh, no, go. Red light, bomb, 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 fire drill. <laughs> Third world war. So everyone runs out of the kunj. So what are you saying about Jatila about and, and, and Kakati? What are you saying? Okay. So every time you see a monkey, you think of Kakati, huh? Okay, good. <laughs> well, this is <laughs> that's an interesting way to go. Every time I see a monkey, I think, where's my slingshot? <laughs> I don't think about Kakati. I think about slingshot and saving Rarani's trees. <laughs> <laughs> you can dream about Cogby and shoot the monkeys. <laughs> I'm a practical man. <laughs> I'm a protector of this Vagisha, Roran Vagisha. You have a question? Yeah. From Facebook, from YouTube, Russian YouTube, also. last second. They're watching in Russian now? Russian, yeah. They're watching in Ra right now? No, no, no. It, it was other one. Only. Okay, yeah, okay. Russian YouTube question. Yes. With all respect, I would like to ask you how to understand um, that one guru, that any guru who is taking who has position in any society, is actually guru. So how to understand who is guru? Who is taking? Who is a member of any society? I don't, I don't understand the question. Mm. How to understand? Guru is guru, boss. <laughs> anyway, the question is an interesting question. A guru is in some society. You mean? If someone, some man or woman takes a position of guru, first of all, it says they should have the blessing. It says, Sadhu Samat Samatsu. It's one of the characteristics of the guru. Guru should have blessings of his guru and of the other of the, of the sadhus to be a Diksha guru. One of the, one of the qualifications of the guru. He should have the blessings and order of his guru and the blessings of other saintly people to be a, to become a Diksha guru. That's the first thing. The second thing, he should know Shastra. And he should have, it says, uh, the verse that defines the guru. It says, you should, have experience, you should have experience of Krishna, personal experience of Krishna. You should know Shastra. He should come in a proper parampara, and he should have the blessings of his guru, the blessings of sadhu, and he should be fixed in proper behavior and proper principles, and be convinced, could be able to remove the doubts of the disciple and answer the question of the disciple. That's the qualification of guru. So anyone who's alone in his house or in his apartment or in some temple or in some mission or some kutir or wherever the guru is in his private house or in a kutir or an ashram, an institution, a society, wherever the guru stays, it doesn't matter. You should have the characteristics and qualities of a guru. He's guru. Doesn't have anything to do with he's in a, he's in a society or we're in a society of human beings. 
Society means we're here right now. This is society. Society means a group of people. Guru has characteristics and qualities. The main characteristic of the Guru has to have knowledge, has to have bhakti gyan, a realization of the knowledge and convincing power to convince the students of the truth of Shastra. Russian YouTube, PJ. <laughs> Any other questions? Sana. Why would you have a question? It seems like you want to raise your hand when you're too tired or something. I was just wondering, you said about um, uh, Ratimanshari is in the Shaka's group. Always here, but many times in Radha Kunt Met, she's in, in the late class camp. How is it? The question is that Rati Manjri, meaning Tulsi Manjri, Raghunadas, is her Yutashri is Vishaka, that's a fact. But we read many times she's in Indu Lakas Kunt, you're saying? And yo, yo, I don't. Uh, she, she said the question is why is Tulsi Manjri always in Indian Lake? I don't know the answer to that. I haven't seen that myself. I do yoga pit meditation taught to me by my guru, and he described our position in yoga pit is the same as the position of Ishaka's Kunj. The latest Kunj is in the northern direction, and Vishaka's Kunj is northeast direction, and Rati Manjri is also in that Kunj. In the northeast direction, we meditate on Rati Mandri and all our Mandris and Gurus, Guru Mandri Gan is in that northeast Kunj with Raghunathas Tulsi Mandri at the feet of Vishaka, Vishaka Sagi. So I don't know the role of Hindu Lake in relationship with Rati Tulsi Mandri. I don't have any knowledge of that. I'm sorry. That's new to me, the first time I'm hearing this. I haven't read anything. You read anything about this? Where did you read this? Even on the internet confines, everywhere, like many have this kind of maps also. I don't know. My guru, she said, uh, the, the way he said on some maps, she saw on the internet, the different conjures and things. I asked my guru once, I brought up, I had a bunch of maps I collected over the years, a map of the 50 rooms of Nanabhava's palace and the 25 rooms of Rishabha. Rishabhana's palace and the yoga pit in, in Gupta Kund and yoga pit in, in Radha Kund and the yoga pit in Vrindavan. I have all these different maps to them and charts and stuff. I said, is this necessary to meditate on this? He said, this is not, this is not necessary at all. You don't need any of these maps. Don't pay any attention to all this stuff. Because this is all two-dimensional. It's all two-dimensional. You know, it's just length and width drawn. And you have, you have no conception of what's going on. You'll find out, just like you draw a map of your house, your house, your house you're born in. You look at a piece of paper. But when you're born in a house, you know my bedroom's on the second floor, my mother's bedroom's on the first floor. You know where everything is, because you live there. In five minutes, you know where every room is. He says, as soon as you get there, you know the situation. There's no need, there's no need, that has, doesn't have any value in Sadhguru. group. He says, now you meditate on Lila, and you stay with your mantri through, and cultivate your Baba the mantri, Rarani Stasi. This is most important thing. The master is just a waste of time to just divert the, divert the mind from meditating on Lila. It's hard work to meditate. It's very hard work to meditate to keep the mind fixed in Lila. And that's what we have to do. That's what yoga means. There's five, five levels of Swaran. First is simple Swaran, and then Dharana, then Dhyan, then Dhruvana, Sriti, and Samadhi. So the most typical thing is to cross over from Dharana to Dhyan. Dharana means withdrawing the mind and senses from everything, fixing at one thing. Dharana, mean, dhar, dharana means to hold. So there's, there's smart and simple smart and trying to recollect, remember. Then dharana means holding, holding your mind, fixing your mind in one leela. Or sometimes and dhyana means deeply meditating for a long period of time. Then that, that, then that, the, the next is Juvan Sruti. Juvan Sruti is like Baba Bhakti, very high stage. And Samadhi is praying. 
So the, we had to work on these five levels of swar and, and the master, nowhere the Goswami is talking about need to map. If the Goswamis haven't talked about and haven't given, it's not important. These things have all been introduced by different sadhus and sages and siddhavapas and whatever over the time. And they, they're cool and they're interested in looking at some of these are painted in multicolors. And uh, you know, it's, something, it's just something to look at. Even Yugo Kishore, who's a very innovative devotee, disciple of uh, Nathas Babaji, he was making programs, 3D programs with kunjas and everything, like virtual reality programs with mantras jumping over Radha He showed me one time about 10 years ago. He took some Karmi doll program, some hero, hero, hero lady, 3D cartoon-like program, Shara Manji, she was picking flowers on one side of Radha And he said, what's my Manji? She jumped over Radha He jumped over, she jumped over Radha like super. <laughs> it was really cool, 3D. But, you know, the, the thing is, we have to have inner vision. Inner vision is only developed by going through five stages of Swaran. This is described in Sandarvas and other Goswami's books. Swaran is a hard practice. This is yoga. You know, every, every yoga has... Five these limbs of smarn. Samadhi is a goal. Our goal is praying samadhi, lila samadhi. So we have to stick with lila. Just stick with lila. Read one lila book, you get bored of that read another. You read Krishna Krishna Kani Krishna Krishna Kamudi. You get bored of that, read Krishna Bhavanamrita. Get bored of that, read Govinda Lila Marita. Get bored of that, read Sangava Kavajum. Get bored of that, read Vilakaswan. Get bored of that, read Vilakaswan. They go back again and start. That's what I've been doing for 35 years. I've had six great books I just keep over, over, over. Then read Bhavan the Star Sangha, it's got everything in there. That, that's just, the tendency is to always look for something new, always something cool, something new, something innovative, something. There's no, there's no, way, no way out of hard work. Meditation is hard work, you know. Roll up your sleeves, you know, put on your garden gloves, you know. Put on your garden gloves and go out there and start picking the weeds. <laughs> Sitting down to meditate is hard. We were getting up early now, meditating that time. Trying to meditate. I don't know, maybe you already do. But you get up early, it's very good. And use those priceless hours in the morning for meditating on Lila. Krishna sees our endeavor to meditate and reciprocates with us. Let's keep the mind focused. Don't, just keep Leela and Leela and me, me and Leela. It's me and me and Leela. That's all I see. I don't. I don't. I don't see anything. The eye. Of the, Arjun just saw the eye of the fish. This map. That map. You know, look at this map. Wow, cool. None of our spouse. Oh, Krishna's bedroom's here. The Radharani's bedroom is right behind your guest bedroom. Because when Janmashtami is here, Radharani spends three days in underground and celebrates Krishna's birthday. And then Nandamaraj is in Vishwanath's palace. There's 25 rooms. There's one bedroom for Krishna, right behind Radharani's bedroom. So when, when Krishna's family goes to Varsana and celebrates Radharani's birthday, then Radharani's their bedrooms are joining. There's a door between them. Hi, Bob. No problem. So that's a cool map. So I have all those maps, but I don't pay any attention to all that. I just, because my guru told me not to waste my time with that. It's fun, I got enjoyed it, but it's just, it's just, our mind always, mind is like a child. Mind is like a child, always wants to play. You give him a red ball, he plays a red ball for five days, I don't like it. You give him a green ball, the same ball was green, no, it's green. It's a green ball. I don't like this green ball. Then you get a pink ball, he has 20 balls, different colors. Then you get a rubber ball, then you get a plastic ball with holes in it. It's pl it has holes in it, it's plastic ball. That's, that's cooler, I got to put my finger in it. The mind's like a child always wants to play with new balls. <laughs> but we have to just, our, our work is Leela and Leela Smar, and that's it. Smar is Manara Dharma is Smar. And Prem Bhakti Chandra and Narutan Das Thakur says the life of the mind is Smar. The Prem Bhakti Chandra is, is, a, is a summary of all the teachings of the Goswami books. All the teachings are summarized here. Prem Bhakti Chandra. 
The sutras is only 120. They use 120 shlokas and bring back to each other. They outline everything in the Goswami's books is there. For Rag Raghunam Gopakti, Manjri Bhav. Manjri Bhav starts in verse 39 or 49. Mm -hmm. First 39 verses are all Sambandha Tava Navideya. Prayoshan Tava starts in verse 39 of Prayam Bhakti Chandra, 39 or 49. Then it's all about Rag Bhakti, Manjri Bhav. After that. I gave class on Prayam Bhakti Chandra, I started verse 49. <laughs> the first 49 verses. Talking about lust, anger, greed, and all that good stuff. And, okay. <laughs> I think it's getting close to six o'clock. I feel like it's um, two hours out. My battery's out. What time is it? 556. 5.56. My batteries are drained out. Any more questions? That was a real tricky question there. <laughs> you got some good, you, got, you know too much stuff, you know. <laughs> You're gobbling up information from everywhere. <laughs> You're an information monster. <laughs> Keep it simple. This is a place for bhajan. The Goswami's lived in Radhakun doing simple bhajan, Lila Swaran Bhaj. Manjri Shrup, meditation, Lila Swaran, Seva Manjri Shrup, that's it. Just stay there. You got everything. Any more questions? Okay. Russian YouTube. That's a new that's a new angle. How can I be sure? No, wait, excuse me, sir. Let this gentleman ask questions. I don't don't mind. Okay, go ahead. Is it reading your book on Sri Chitana Mahaprabhu and Radhana Yeah, don't put it on the floor. Shastras are sacred. There's all go so many books quoted in there. Well, you're a new person, you don't understand all these terms. After class, I can explain these terms. You're confusing different things. Because when Rupa Goswami talks, when Jiva Goswami talks about attraction for following Rag Bhakti and Bhakti Rasmita Sindhu, verse 292 to 296, chapter 2, first wave. He says, Kinshit Anabhuti. He says, what's the starting, what's the starting point for Raghunam Gopakti? Kinshit Anabhuti. Kinshit Anabhuti means a slight, a slight interest, a slight attraction. Like you see a, you see a Ras Lila performance, a drama performance in Vrindavan. Brahman boys playing Radha and Krishna, having Ras Lila. And you get attracted to that. You, you didn't have any interest in Radha and Krishna. He said, so it's very sweet, it's very nice. That may be your start, that could be your starting point of Rag Bhakti Sadhana. And Ruchi, in, this, in the terms of Sadhana Bhakti, there's different levels of advancement. There's Vajna, there's Sada Sangha, Vajna Kriya, and Arjunavati, then Nishta, then Ruchi, then uh, Sakti, Bhav, and Prema. There's different stages of devotional advancement. So Ruchi is one level. But when Ruchi is described in relation to Rag Bhakti, it doesn't mean the level of sad. It's not that advanced level of sadhana bhakti. It just means that ruchi means taste. It's like Hindi, the word ruchi means taste. You have a taste, you have attraction, you have a liking. Ruchi means, in this case, ruchi means liking. You have a like. I I see I see Radha Krishna. They're leaders. I like it. I like it more than Yashoda and, and Gopal. I like it more than Krishna Bala and Subal Saka, Kaur, Gopa Leelas. I like this most. That's called ruchi. Ruchi for Radha and Krishna worship. It's a taste. It's not the advanced level of bhakti. Well, we'll go one more question because you had a question. How can we be sure that uh, 
Radharani, our Swamini, likes 100% what we are doing. Not 50%, not 60, not 70, 100. How can we be sure in our heart? That's it. Question is asked, how can we be sure in our heart 100% that Swamini Radharani likes what we're doing? You can be sure that Radharani 100% likes what you're doing. If what, if what you're doing 24 hours a day is serving Krishna. <laughs> Do you disagree? <laughs> what do you say, Bhavati? You agree? The question, I'll ask the question again. How can we 100%, not 50%, how can we 100% sure that Krishna, the Radharani likes what we're doing? And my answer was, if we're, if we're serving Krishna 24 hours a day, Radharani would be 100% pleased. Is there any other answer? No. <laughs> so, you're, so the person asked the question, he replied that was saying, Radharani, Radharani. <laughs> That Radha Radha means I believe you, or Radha Radha means I don't believe you, or Radha Radha means I doubt you, or what, what does your Radha Radha, Radha mean? I have to ask you that. <laughs> let me say another, let me give another answer to the same question. How do we know that Radha Radha is 100% pleased with, our, with us as a devotee of striving devotee of Radha and Krishna? Should we 100% please if we develop pure love for her and Krishna? Because if we develop pure love, then we can help her serve Krishna. She wants more and more servants to Krishna. Because it says in Rupadash, uh, uh, that Radharani is serving Krishna to the utmost, but all the sakis are nur the, sakis, the presence of many thousands of sakis, they're called poshna, they're nourishing the love of Radharani Krishna. So the more sakis, the more nourishment, the more richer, the more tasty Krishna's service, Krishna's happiness becomes by more mantras, more sevites. So if we become pure devotees, we become premium bhaktas, Radharani will be 100% pleased with us because we'll help her please Krishna and serve Krishna, and give more happiness to Krishna. And that's the goal of bhakti, is to please and satisfy Krishna. Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe